classic Swedish food, a frozen bullish pan pizza. 20 minutes at the cylinder head and it's done. So uh, I drove the tractor out here, it's around 10 kilometers I think, uh, it went good, uh, then we went down in the forest and we dug up some poles for her horse fence, that took a couple of hours, then I walked back uh, and I was about to start the tractor, then I checked the fuel tank and it was dry as dirt, uh, I went a bit suspicious uh, because I know these pumps can fail at pump seal, so I checked the engine oil stick and uh, the diesel was in the crankcase. So this is not a unusual fault on this. And if you check the oil stick on it, the diesel and oil mix is all the way up. So yeah. And here is the fuel pump. And uh, inside here is the gasket or the seal for the main shaft in the pump. So we're gonna remove the pump and replace that seal today. And we're also going to replace the uh, engine oil, of course, because that's like 10% oil and 90% diesel right now, so... I have to remove this little lid here to get access to the bolts for the gears, for the fuel pump. And then I have to remove the hoses here for the coolant as well, so... And I didn't bring any extra jars to uh, put the coolant in. And uh, the coolant or antifreeze is actually brand new on this. I swapped it out just a couple of weeks ago. So I don't want... Uh, I want to reuse it, so... Uh, yeah, I will check if I can find some old jars or a can or something that I can put it in. Should find something in here. There we go. Almost empty. That'll do. Tap for the radiator right there, um, and I did find a piece of rubber hose here. So I, let's see if I can get this inside here to the tap so I don't mess around with the antifreeze. coming. So while the coolant draining out radiator, I can just as well talk a little bit about this tractor. This is my old uh, Mesa Ferguson 165 from the late 60s, I think. From the beginning I built this tractor to race with, because uh, tractor racing was a pretty hot thing here in Sweden back then. Um, but then I realized that it became a very good useful machine instead here on the farm. So I only did uh, one race, finished third, but the guys that won and came in second place had real monsters machines and sponsors and teams and stuff, so I'm very happy with third place. So here it is for the first time at my place. The cabin was so rusted away so I couldn't keep it. It was too much work on it. Here is the turbo, stainless steel manifold. Here is some building pictures, almost ready. Then I actually did paint it, uh, but that was after the race that I found some pictures on here. So I have messed around with the gearbox a little bit with the gear ratio uh, with some patterns and IDs of my own and that works really well. Uh, so the tractor is now three times faster on all the gears than it was before. And I also got a turbo charger on it. 
because the exhaust manifold was broken when I got it, so I thought that I can just as well make a new manifold and put a uh, turbo on it. And that is a great thing. Uh, I don't know how many horsepower it is now. Uh, original, I think it is like 58 horsepower in this Perkins engine, but it is well over a hundred right now because this turbocharger puts out uh, like 1.3 bars at uh, 1200 rpm and up uh, so uh, it is very useful and uh, it holds up pretty well i've been using this tractor like this for around seven years now and yeah just runs it always starts runs very good uh, so uh, this uh, seal at the fuel pump is now the first thing that have broken down on this seven years running this tractor so i think that's uh, that's very good i'm not going to open up the pump more than needed so i'm not going to remove anything of this uh, because you can swap the seal out just removing the pump uh, so we are going to remove the throttle linkage and the stop linkage there uh, the fuel lines the injector lines bolts. I'm gonna make a mark here so I get the pump in uh, the exact position that it is right now because you can turn the pump around to adjust the timing for the uh, injectors but that's good right now so uh, yeah just gonna make a mark so we get it at the same position later. It uh, already is a mark here, as you can see, for the pump, so uh, that will be easy to reinstall later. And I actually did bring some plugs for the fuel pump, because this is a high-pressure diesel fuel pump, and you don't want to get dirt in it. Uh, this is not as sensitive as uh, modern car diesel engines, but anyway. You don't want any dirt in a diesel pump. Got some for the outlets here as well. Let's see if you can get those on. I'm gonna leave the last one so the pump is in place while uh, removing the gear here in front. So now the coolant has drained out, so I'm gonna remove this hose right here. So we can get access to this. Okay, so this is much worse than I first thought, uh, because here is three bolts holding the gear to the hub that you can see in here with the splines, and here is the bolt that should hold the splines and hub into the pump, but that's totally loose, um, that's no good. I have resealed the arms for the throttle, stop linkage, replaced o-rings, and this seal right here, this seal to this hatch. Uh, and I have also replaced uh, the O-rings in here and uh, here. 
But I haven't removed the pump at any time, so I don't know how long that screw has been loose. But anyway, we will uh, undo these three bolts right here and get the pump out so we can see how bad this is. And when you remove a pump like this on a Perkins engine, you want to remove these three bolts and just pull the pump straight out and don't turn the engine over while uh, working on the pump. Uh, just leave the gear as it is and then you can just stick your pump in again and uh, tighten the bolts up and uh, you will be good. And at this stage you have to be very careful because there is washers here on uh, these bolts. Don't drop washers or bolts into the engine in the transmission right here because then you have many many hours in front of you to uh, get those out. Probably if you can't get them with a magnet or so but chances are pretty small so you have to be careful here. If you want to play real safe you can put some paper under the gear uh, so the washers can't fall down. That's <laughs> probably a good idea. Put the last bolt here and then the pump should be loose and ready to pull out. I think we will remove uh, those two injection lines there. Yes, I don't want to bend them, so I think it's better to just undo them. So there you can see the seal, but uh, this hub right here should follow the pump. Like that. And uh, you can see the splines here. It is made that way, so you can't put it in the wrong direction. It fits just in one place. So uh, this one is the extra that I brought, and this is the old one. They are both in good shape, but I actually think that the one I brought is a little bit better, because there is a little groove here on the old one where the uh, radial seal should be. So I think I'm gonna go with the, the one that I brought. And this is complete with the centrum bolt and everything. Uh, the old centrum bolt actually looked good. That was uh, loose, but anyway, I'm gonna use this one. So, and uh, the bearing surface here looks good, I think. The shaft is all loose in here, but that's all right, as it should be. The old radial seal feels very dry, so that's no wonder it didn't seal properly. So um, that one you can just bend out with screwdriver, so I'm gonna do that and uh, put the new seal in and put it all together and uh, we will remount it again. Everything looks good. Very nice. 
knife. So let's put the new seal in. New seal. A socket that fits. Just gonna tap this in. Perfect. Then we're gonna take a little oil. Here you can see the gear and here is a little pin that fits right into the slot in the hub of the injection pump. So you actually can't get this wrong. So now everything is in place, so I'm going to torque this three bolts first, so the gear is in place, and then torque the centrum bolt. So now everything is in place, looking good. Uh, these three bolts are torqued, the central bolts are torqued. I did forget to bring some gasket material for this one, but I will use the old gasket. If it leaks, I will change it later. So I can take the tractor home anyway, and that's the good part.
so that's it. Uh, I think we're gonna refill the coolant now. Uh, so uh, we get some free jars because I need that to fill the uh, old engine oil in. So this is the fuel tank, the original one was rusted away, so I found this one, uh, I think it contains around 8 liters or so, but that's enough, works fine. Uh, but we're gonna fill it up with a little bit of diesel now, and let that run through the system while we drain the engine oil. I think the tank is from a old jet engine, actually, I don't remember. So on the pump here we got two bleeding screws, but I always open the top one, because all the air is going to the top anyway, so that has worked every time. So. Yeah, already starts to bubble, so I'm gonna leave it like that, and we're gonna drain the oil, remove the oil filter. So the diesel can run itself through here, I think. That's a tight one. Might work better. So, this jar got over full with diesel and oil, and uh, when I fill those up at the gas station, I uh, usually get 23 liters in them, and this is more than that, so, yeah, I don't know how much we are gonna fill up the engine with, but uh, that will show. So, I'm also gonna drain the oil filter, uh, but I don't gonna replace it, because it is like three hours old, I just replaced oil in it. So I'm gonna reuse that, and it's just diesel, so... Good, so I'm just gonna mount this back again. So now we are at maximum at the oil dipstick, so we're gonna fill up the filter as well. So we're gonna start it and top the oil up later.
right on time. We actually got diesel. So now, when bleeding, we already have diesel here, so I think it will be enough with those two pipes. Uh, I haven't tightened those up yet, so we're just going to start it and uh, see if it runs. So now we are ready to start. We have diesel here. We're going to bleed the injection lines. I have those two open, so I'm going to crank it over and see if we get diesel. Yep, comes diesel. And I think it started to fire on those ones. Let's try it again. Oil pressure is good. So it has been running for like 20 minutes now. And I can't see any leaks. Nothing there. Nothing there either. Nothing at the fuel uh, or oil filter. Nothing for good. drive this home today because I have both the tractor and the car here so I have to uh, drive home and get my wife so he, she can uh, drive me out here so I can drive this home but that has to be tomorrow so I'm gonna shut it off and we're gonna revisit this by tomorrow so now it is tomorrow and my wife just left me here it is a rainy day, lots of wind, cold, typical Swedish autumn. The cover that I had over the exhaust has been uh, falling down during the night and it has been raining quite a bit. So I'm going to start it up, let it warm up a little. That was easy. I'm going to check the fuel tank as well. Yeah, full of diesel. So the seal is now working properly. That's good. High range. Low range. First gear. So this is the lowest gear there is, and if I just put it in high range instead, this is first gear, high range, second gear, high range, third gear, high range.
So if you want to help my channel out, please subscribe, like this video if you find it interesting, and leave a comment down below. Say hi, talk about the tractor, about uh, anything really. I will explain in a later video what I have done to the gearbox. Yeah, I'm pretty blue. I painted a little bit and spilled some some paint. Uh, but anyway, I will talk about how I have done with the gearbox on this tractor in a later video. Because I know that the comments down below will be like, Oh, what have you done to the gearbox? And, uh, oh, that's fake, the tractor ain't going that fast, I can see the leaves on the trees just waving uh, very fast so you have speed up the video. But no, this tractor does exactly 60 miles per hour at uh, 2700 RPMs, I think, or if it is 2600. Uh, so, uh, it is around three times faster now on all the gears. So, uh, I don't drive around in 60 miles per hour. 60 miles per hour is 96 kilometers per hour. Uh, I don't drive around that fast, but I drive around in like 30 miles per hour or 50, 60 kilometers per hour at very low RPM, and that's very nice because uh, these tractors, original, uh, they make like 25 kilometers an hour. I don't know how fast that is in uh, miles, but <laughs> like 15 miles an hour. At uh, full RPM, and that's pretty slow and boring, and very bad for the for the fuel consumption as well. So this tractor is really great, and I will explain in a later later video, as I said, how I have done. So uh, don't ask in the comments because I don't gonna answer right now how, uh, how I have done, because it is a little bit more complicated than that. While I have used this tractor, as I said before, in like seven years now, uh, with the turbo and the changes in the gearbox and everything, and I am not nice to this tractor. It has done a lot of work, a very hard work. I remember when uh, I built the sawmill, uh, I have a wagon behind it that we loaded 12 tons of dirt, and I don't know what wagon is weighing empty but I guessing like three to four tons at least so uh, around 16 tons behind this tractor and we drove uh, out to a friend of mine and dumped that dirt like seven or eight times in uh, two days and there is it takes around 20 minutes by car so like 15 minutes with this one and that load behind and that was not nice to the tractor but it held up real well didn't happen anything so uh, yeah I'm guessing that uh, most people uh, have stopped watching right now because I'm just talking but anyway thanks for watching I see you next time don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment and like this video if you find it interesting I love you and I see you next time